All right. Well, I hope everyone's doing okay. I know it's four o'clock on day two, uh, but I think uh, this is going to be a very, very interesting conversation. Um, should we be afraid of AI? And we can't. We don't have anyone else better to speak with this about than Luke Julia, who was the co-author of most of the patents for Surrey. Uh, I think we all have heard of Surrey before, and now is uh, vice president of innovation at Samsung Electronics, looking at the same topics, I'm sure. Um, so we're going to be looking at this subject together, and I want to break it down. Um, but first of all, my name is Jason McDonald. I'm the senior manager at Fahrenheit 212. We're a uh, global innovation um, firm that is part now of Capgemini, and we look and work with companies on how to build new services, products, um, or businesses. So we're always looking at top-line growth. And so this is a question that we're getting a lot from our clients as they're looking at AI, how it's going to affect them. And I think most people in this industry will kind of roll their eyes, should we be afraid of AI? We know the answer to that. But there's an education component that's really needed around AI and how it's presented and how it's uh, discussed internally. And so I want to bring this topic up with you and I, maybe you can talk a little bit about your uh, experience in AI and, and, and how long you've been involved and then we'll get into uh, what it is and how we should be looking at it. Okay, so I've been involved in AI for the past 30 years. So. Uh, that's why actually I don't know what it is. Okay, uh, I, I realize that I don't know what it is uh, after a few uh, a few decades. Uh, so the, the reality, frankly, today is that I'm a little bit tired um, of uh, hearing, you know, about uh, people that are saying that uh, AI is going to uh, uh, kill us basically or to do bad things. Um, so my message is, is going to be very very simple: uh, is that AI won't kill you. Okay, uh, and uh, it's going to actually to help you a lot. There is still a lot, a lot of things to do. And uh, if we don't talk about AI or about intelligence in particular, I mean, uh, let's talk about machine learning and deep learning. I think that there are a lot, a lot of good things to come uh, that we are st still only at the beginning. I mean, even though, you know, it's for the past 10 years that we are, that we are playing with machine learning and deep learning, uh, really, I mean, uh, the reality is that it started back, you know, in 1956, uh, even a little bit before. Um, so for the past 60 years, we are still doing the same things. We are doing, you know, we are applying some very good mathematical models, uh, and we are teaching the machines to do what we want them to do. They are not going at any time do something that we are not telling them. But, but how, how do we address that when we're seeing people like, uh, Elon Musk, uh, who you know gets on Twitter and starts talking about this stuff, he seems like somebody who should know a bit about this, and he's worried about uh, AGI. I mean, what? I mean, how how do you address that? What are his fears? Why do you think he's doing that if you really believe it is something that doesn't exist? I, I'm not in his brain, so I don't know what uh, what his fear is going to be exactly, and I don't know why he's saying things that he's saying. And he's not the only one. I mean, there are a lot of people that are you know uh, threatening us basically uh, that uh, the AI, the AGI, you know, the AI general AI, uh, is going to, um, uh, to 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 be bad for us. Um, I frankly don't understand. What I know is that uh, never. You know, a robot in one of his uh, factories that he's putting together, a Tesla, will decide to take the screwdriver you know, and to kill the guy in the back. Right. So I, I know that that won't happen. But do you think it's something that could happen with a bit more time? I mean, but it, and, I, and I'm going to go back to what you just said earlier, the fact that you're doing the same thing that you've been doing for six years. That's really interesting to me, that the same approach is being driven, and I guarantee that the technology is better, but you're saying the same approach is happening. So is, that, is it the problem with the approach, or what, what, what's happening there? I don't think there is a problem, first of all. I mean, frankly, I mean, uh, again, I'm saying that there are a lot, a lot of new things to do, you know, and, uh, and we are going to see a lot of progress in the next few years. But the reality today, when you look at the algorithms that we are, that we are using, I mean, this is mathematics, you know, that we have been modeling for the past 60 years. So we have a lot of improvements in terms of machines, in terms of data, in terms of uh, processing. So there is a, a better way now, you know, to access the data and to have much more, much more data in order to, you know, uh, find something in an image. So what changed is the ability to get the data. What didn't change is the algorithms. It's a little bit, you know, exaggerated what I'm saying. I mean, that there are some progresses in algorithms themselves, but at the end of the day, it's only mathematics. And what I know, you know, and what I feel is that for sure, mathematics are not enough to create a, a general artificial intelligence. And what I feel, but I don't know, uh, is that most likely it has to be a mix of biology and uh, physics and mathematics in order to recreate something like what we have you know, in, uh, up there. 
And, and I mean, is anyone working on that today? Is that is that approach being taken? Are people actually working towards you know ge um, artificial general intelligence? So I don't think that there are a lot of people working on the AGI. I mean, I, I don't think that there is because I mean. Uh, there are so many things to do with the current approach, you know, with machine learning and deep learning. We are still, as I said, you know, at the very beginning. So since there are still a lot, a lot of work, and it's kind of, you know, easy hanging, hanging fruits, right, that are right there. We can continue to put more data, to put, you know, more compute, to put more GPUs or whatever, you know, to a specific problem or to problems that we didn't tackle yet. So, I, I mean, it's the beginning, no need to go you know, farther. So I'm sure there are people that are thinking about it, and people that, but they have to be very multidisciplinary people, because as I said, it cannot be the same methods that what we are doing today. That's really interesting, and I think from, from our layman's standpoint, you, know, you look at how the technology's advanced very quickly in a, in a very short period of time to kind of affect our lives. I mean, when I go to my parents' house, my dad's yelling at Alexa, it's, you know, it's just kind of crazy to me, right? Um, you hear the stories about you know, people being beaten chess and go and those sort of things. So maybe if you take those examples and kind of break those down, we'd have a better understanding of what's actually happening there. Yeah, so it's very interesting. I mean, uh, again, there are a lot of improvements in people's life you know, with this technology. So that's why you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the first to be very, very proud of, of you know, participating to, to, the, to the community to help people to have some better services, you know, better or whatever. And, and, but we need to realize, so I have you know, some very simple examples of why do I think that today you know, those machines that we are creating, you know, they are far to be intelligent, you know, the way we could define intelligence you know, by looking at us. So first example, very, very simple. You know, everybody knows that uh, in order to, um, to do image recognition, you need a lot, a lot of images, right? I mean, uh, something like to, 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 um, to recognize a cat in an image, you are going to need something like 100,000 images you know, of cats, right? So, and it's, it's working, that's fine, and you recognize the cats and you're happy, right? Uh, and so that you, you achieved something. But now, look at what we humans are doing, right? I mean, my, my two-year-old daughter, I mean, she needs two images of cats, you know, to recognize that. So it's not the same techniques that our brains is going you know, to put together in order to recognize the, the thing. An, uh, another, uh, another example that I find very, very disturbing and, and showing that we are way far uh, from, uh, from being, you know, anywhere near AGI is uh, the Go thing, DeepMind. You know? So DeepMind, two years ago, three years ago, uh, did beat the, the world champion of, uh, of Go, right? So DeepMind by itself, it was you know, a, a few hundred GPUs, a few hundred CPUs, a lot of memory. I mean, basically, it was a data center by itself, right? DeepMind, while it was playing against the, uh, against the champion, it was um, using 440 kilowatts an hour. Okay, wow. 440 kilowatts an hour. Because it was a lot of machines, right? It was very powerful. The guy in front of it, with the brain, 20 watts an hour. Okay, so, and by the way, the guy in front of it, he can play more than go. He can do a lot of other things. Right, he's not stuck to that one, exactly. one standardized process. Exactly, he's not process. in this vertical, you know. So, yes, he was beaten, you know, at the go game, but he can do much more with only 20 watts. So again, that shows, and it's a simple example, but it shows that the techniques that we are using with the artificial intelligence are very, very different from the techniques that our brains are using. And I think that's really interesting, a really compelling way to kind of show the difference between the power process. I, I want to take this to, I've heard the word winter used around AI several times today. If people have been up here talking about, the, oh, I was in the last winter, I was in two winters ago. Um, and I think it comes and goes, right? The funding shifts. Um, right now, we're, we're in a, we're in a in the spring, I mean, people are very excited about the possibilities. Um, are we past that phase of having different winters, or is that something we should be worried about moving forward? So I think we're at, we're at the end of the of the summer, so we are in the spring, and I'm afraid we are going to be. Uh, uh, sorry, we are the the fall, and uh, we are the fall. So it means that I'm afraid that we are going to reach you know winter very soon. Why is that? And because of the people that we are talking about before, I won't give his name again, uh, and some other people you know, that are saying basically bullshit, frankly, you know, about, about all you know, the, this artificial intelligence thing. So, and the fact that they are going to make people uncomfortable with AI, you know, it's going to you know, really make people afraid and scared, and it's going to bring yet another um, another winter. So the very first winter of AI, for instance, it was back in the 60s. And uh, so after the big hype of the, of the naming of the, of the AI, it was back in 1956, as I said. I mean, the, the goal was to do natural language at the time. 
the excitement was about natural language. And it, it took, you know, something like three, four years to realize that it was much more complicated, you know, than what the AI could bring at the time, right? And so basically the funding, you know, dropped and it was gone, it was an AI. Today it's a little bit different because the promises, people kind of feel that they are there. So I don't think that the promises are going to be the one that are going to kill AI if you know we don't make it, uh, if you, we, we are not careful. But I think that the fear that people are injecting you know, in, in us, basically by saying that you know, the robots are going to kill us, or that you know, uh, we need to compete with the intelligence by you know, inserting some chips you know, in our brains, I mean, it's scary. And, and the funding can drop just because we, we are saying things that are not true. I mean, this is fake news. I mean, if we are talking <laughs> about fake news, this is fake news. And so, I mean, so let's say that it, it almost sounds to me like there's a branding problem. You know, that, that this isn't artificial intelligence. Uh, I, mean, I don't know what else we'd call it, you know, um, enhanced intelligence, something like that. Um, but as we're looking at this, and if general, uh, artificial and general intelligence isn't something that's capable today, what, where are we in terms of what's capable? You know, are, are we halfway there? Are we just touching the tip of the iceberg? Oh, we are, uh, I mean, 0 0.0001% there. I mean, we are nowhere. I mean, basically, you know, I like to, to draw a, a, a very simple, uh, you know, a graph, which is basically uh, showing what, you know, intelligence is, you know. So intelligence is basically a continuous line that is somewhere, you know, in the 50%, you know, and this is what we are, right? And it's continuous and infinite, right? So this is us, right? And then there is the artificial intelligence. What is inte artificial intelligence? It's going to be a bunch of, you know, lines, there, you know, that are much higher than 100, actually, that are going to kill us, you know, in terms of, uh, of performances, right? But it's totally discontinued, you know, and, I mean, it covers only a small spectrum, and it's definitely not infinite, right? So this is what artificial intelligence, this is where it is today. So it's nowhere, and it won't be there before, you know, we change the, the actual techniques, like I was saying earlier. And, and, and in terms of like where you see exciting things happening in the space today, you know, where should we be watching in terms of where you think this is going to be used to its fullest over the next, you know, let's say two to three years? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, as I said, there are a lot of things to do in machine learning and deep learning today. This part is really just the beginning. The very exciting things, of course, you know, is, for, is to save the humanity, right? I mean, uh, what is it going to be? I mean, if you are looking at medicines, if you are doing, you're looking at health, you know, being able to find in an image a cancer, you know, something like uh, uh, three years before it happens, you know, and where you, we used to, 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 uh, to find it, I mean, this is exciting. So a lot of progress in medicine is obvious that you know AI is going to be something that we can use there. A lot of way people are going to live their life also when they are sick for any reason. You know if they if they are sick, you know adherence uh, and things that uh, are going to tell people how to take their medication. You know to remind them. So it's going to be little things that it could be it could look like little things, but are going to be very interesting in terms of data in terms of. Um, um, multiple data that are going to come from a lot of places that are going to help us to, to do the, th those simple things that we should be doing. And I think, you know, we've touched on these points a little bit, uh, but I'd, I'd really like to wrap it back. I know, I know that you're writing a book right now, uh, AI Doesn't Exist. Uh, can you give us a little preview as to what that's going to be about and uh, when it's coming out and what you're, what you're hoping to accomplish with that? So I actually wrote it, so it's, oh, it's written, it's written, okay. it's done, it's, uh, it's going to be uh, out on uh, January 24th, but, uh, but um, pre-order now, pre-order now, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good, uh, no, but basically what I'm saying is exactly what we just said today, I mean, uh, AI doesn't exist, it's a little bit, you know, uh, on purpose, something like, uh, you know, uh, to, to s make people think about it, uh, but, but, it's actually a, a book about the hope, right? About the fact that we cannot give up. We cannot, you know, because of the bullshit that people are saying, we cannot just, you know, give up and, and give them the keys. I mean, the message is we are in charge and we'll be in charge, you know, for a, a long time. Well, very good. Well, this was an extremely interesting conversation. I think a lot of us have a lot of uh, good points to take back uh, when we're talking to the different organizations we work with about how to leverage AI and what it really is. Uh, so I appreciate you spending some time with us and coming out from California to the Francis AI uh, conference. I know that means a lot to everyone involved. Uh, so thank you, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back next year. Thank you very much. Thank you.